Johnny Pink. Today I'm going to be shooting two different lenses. Something you've been wanting to see, I'm sure, or probably not. Canon's 200 to 800 versus Canon's 800 f11. This is an f9, f11, head to head today here at Kenneth Hahn Park. I'm shooting hummingbirds. The reason I came here is because, especially on a sunny day like this, I know there's a plethora of hummingbirds. And it's sunny, going back to back. I've been shooting these for a while, so I've already going head to head like this and really just taking my time, I've developed some conclusions. So what I wanted to show you is this is, if they were fitting in your, ba in your bag, look at that. Okay, this is fully retracted. This is also fully retracted, not in its shooting mode. So if I want to go to 800, I have to do this. There you go. Now both of these are at 800. Not too big a difference. This one does fit e more easily into a bag. Both of these are on the R5. My shutter speed, I'm keeping everything identical. So for the first bunch of shots that I'm gonna show you here, the shutter speed on everything is 1,250. I'm shooting everything the same today. Same light, same day, same place. I'm just switching between lenses and I have to keep taking pictures of the lens that's in my bag to know which lens I have on so I can keep everything separate. I'm gonna show you some photos real quick that I was shooting at 1250, the base aperture, F9, F11, and auto ISO on everything. Check these out. Love the sounds of being out here. And now some 8K footage, both handheld. Check these out. I'm too close for this lens. <laughs> One of the drawbacks. Easy access to the focus ring right here. One of the major advantages to this lens.
There's a little white crown that's that's tucked in there. Is it perfect? No, in this case, I was shooting that to show you where I use this when people say to me, oh, you just point to the side and then you come back into it. Doesn't always work. I use my manual focus all the time for little shots like that. Huge disadvantage to the other lens. Huh. Advantages, disadvantages. No lens, no setup is perfect. And now that I'm back over this way and shooting them in flight, I shot a couple at the 1250, but my favorite lower speed, the lowest speed I like for in flight is 2500. 35, 4000 is actually better. You freeze a lot more of it, but I was just trying to get, oh, there's two that are sitting up there on a branch. I, I was just trying to get some freeze motion. So I'm gonna show you everything that I shot, even the ones that are out of focus because it's realistic. Nothing is perfect. Not every single shot is going to be in focus. So check these out. And then when you come back after that, I'll give you my thoughts. Without having developed any of them yet, what I've noticed looking through is this one is much, much, much slower to focus. Notification. This one is much, much quicker to focus. It locks on a lot faster. The focus ring on this, as I've complained about before, is way back here. So when I'm shooting birds in a bush like this, I have trouble getting this. People have said, you just turn away move away from your subject, move back in. It doesn't always work that way, especially if something is tucked into the bushes, which is where this one has the advantage with this focus ring being where it is. I actually prefer that. If I knew that that was everything I was gonna be shooting and I had distance, I would probably go with this one over this one. This one has the advantage, of course, of having 200 millimeters and a shorter minimum focus distance advantage this one again the huge advantage to me that would make this the perfect lens is the placement of this would i prefer a faster lens other than an f9 or an f11 of course i think we all would but at 800 millimeters which is my favorite focal length for wildlife that deeper depth of field actually gives you a lot more in focus in other words at 800 millimeters if you're far enough away, you will only get this much in focus at, let's say, f4, okay? You're only going to get this much in focus. There's no way around it. It's because of that shallow depth of field. So at an f8 or an f10, even on, say, my 600 millimeter, I'm going to get more of it. I'm still only going to get this much. Not everything is going to be in focus. It just won't. That's the way depth of field works. 
If I'm wrong, you can correct me down in the comments below. That's where focus stacking comes in. So if you're shooting macro, I'm a purist. I say that because I'm not real good at focus stacking, even though it's super easy. I take one shot and I pick only one shot. I'm not going to take my time to focus stack. It's, it's not something I'm into. It, to me, it's, it's beautiful, but that's not me. For this, you could focus stack, but stuff is moving so quick, you're not going to focus stack. I'm a purist. Minimum focus distance on this is fantastic. It's not as good as the 100 to 500, even with the 1.4. Shooting at 700 millimeters at an F10, I think is still sharper than this one by far. It's a lot more expensive though as an L glass lens as well. For most people, it's not gonna be negligible. Y you won't notice it unless you're looking at them side by side or pixel peeping. This one, of course, has the disadvantage of, you only get that center section like you do with a DSLR lens. So if you've been shooting with DSLR your whole life, it's not gonna be any different for you. There's a red box there, you just keep your subject in the center of that and you're good to go. So these are my thoughts on these fantastic two lenses. Wait, thumbnail. Let me know what you think down below. Final conclusion. Can they both take phenomenal photos? Of course they can. The magic of a true photo, the placement of it, all of that, the eye, is you. What you'll notice about all these shots is I try and get something green behind the birds, even the ones that were sitting up on a branch out there. I'm gonna go shoot a couple more over there. To me, that adds, watching the birds behind me over there, um, it, it, it adds something to the photo. I don't, I'm not a big fan of birds up against a blue sky unless that's all I can get. I like clutter. I like stuff behind it. I love that messy background. To me, that's what makes a great photo, but that's just my eye. Y you may be completely different. Is everything going to be perfect every single time? Absolutely not. And does it matter? Man, it sure does not. Did you have fun? That is exactly what matters that day. This one has a very low price tag for those of you that like that or that that is what you can afford. Fantastic. This is an awesome lens. It is limited. This one is double the price, but you have the zoom and you do have a shorter focal distance. Neither is perfect. They're just not. Advantages, disadvantages. The choice, of course, is entirely up to you. Johnny Pink, man, I cannot say thank you to you enough for letting me share with you guys. You have a fantastic day out there, whatever it is you're going to do. I'll see you out there. If you see me out here standing in the bushes talk to a, talking to a camera, please come up and say hi. You can walk up behind me while I'm filming and we'll stand here and talk. <laughs> Johnny Pink, thanks a lot, man. We'll see you guys.